Well, Gene, I thought we'd uh, have a little classical music on your show there. Yes, the Dance yeah. of the Hours nothing, by Spike Jones. Nothing but the best, uh, John. <laughs> uh, but you used to have mobs in your studio, yes, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. Uh, again, it was the height of the kitty boom. Look at this crowd here. Good Up in grief. Studio 4, the old yeah. building on 9th Street. And uh, these youngsters would come in on a Saturday morning, and right. uh, we would have games and contests. Mm -hmm. This was the era that preceded the Clancy that you saw oh, okay. on the tape. It yeah. was this guy right here. This was uh, Clancy the Keystone Cop. That yeah. ran for a couple of years from uh -huh. uh, 59 through 61. Right. And uh, this guy here had a voice like Jerry Colonna. Remember oh, Jerry Colonna? Sure, I do. Used to Remember, be with Bob yeah. Hope. Hello, Hope. <laughs> Don't be a dope. How are we going to cope? <laughs> Send me some soap. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that and, voice carried yeah, me for two years, road, believe it or not. Right, yeah, did it really? Yeah, and okay. here's Clancy the Keystone Cop uh -huh. with a uh, fellow from Chicago. Yeah. We gave him a tryout on our show uh, to see work? if he could become a sidekick, yeah. you know, like Willie Ketchum. Sure. Because, uh, sure. This guy here was a very capable uh, magician, yeah. and his name was Rajar. Spelled backwards, Rajar. Same that, thing. that was his funniest <laughs> joke, by the way. And he was pretty After good. After that, it got worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. it went downhill from there. And uh, he came out on the set one day, and uh, he said, uh, uh, "Where's Rajar? Oh, that's me." And so that we, had to, we had to let clue. him go. Yeah, right. that's we had right. to let him go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was excellent as a magician, you know, with a set mm -hmm. format, but yeah. the ad lib thing got to him. It did not work. And thank goodness right. we had people like Don Stoltz uh, and like uh, Alan Lotsberg, yeah, who same. played Willie Ketchum, who could sure. ad lib with the best of them. Right. And uh, this shows the Keystone Cop standing right next to another character, Smokey the Bear, remember? Sure. Fight forest sure. fires. Yeah. So we uh, introduced a little good lecture on fighting uh, forest fires. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were the kids in the grandstand, and uh, away we went. Hey, John, and I, who's this character? Well, this only lasted about a half a year. The station went out and bought a, a cartoon package known as Space Angel. And I know a lot of kids told me that was their absolute favorite. Wow. Again, this was the height of the Sputnik sure. and all the business sure. about getting ready to go to the moon. Right. And it was fairly educational because mm -hmm. we'd show them where all the planets were located okay. and all that. And even I learned a little something from it. This was sure. Clancy, the space cop, of course, for about right. half a year. But then yeah. it uh, yeah. settled down, and we ended up uh, here. I even took off my hat. Yeah, I never that. did that when I was with the youngsters. But I was with Halsey Hall on this particular occasion, and I treasure remember him uh, well. So uh, do many in the audience, I'm sure. A uh, half hour that I had with Halsey yeah. Hall. He Just named his all-time major league baseball team, which I will not yeah. go into, yeah. but it indicated his tremendous grasp of baseball history, right. and he had a great sense of humor. For my money, one of the best MCs I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Halsey he was, Hall, he, he, by the way, uh, he by the way was yelling, holy cow, yeah. uh, long before, before yeah. uh, the guy down in Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember his name either. What's John? his name, anybody? Anybody remember that guy? Uh, Audience? Harry Carey. Harry Carey. Yeah, How could I forget yes, that? Yes, yeah. yeah. John, before you get into that, yes. however, we're, we're sort of retracing history, and we've already seen Commodore Cappy, a mm -hmm. still photo, right. but we have a priceless bit of tape that I think we ought to show. You said this was the audition <clears throat> tape? For that was that? part of the audition, yeah. yeah. And this goes back to when? 1957. Whoa first kid show right. and again there were about 10 different announcers trying out yeah. with a variety of characters sure. and this was in a submarine and in inside <laughs> the crazy carrot <laughs> atomic submarine okay let's let's uh, take a look Commodore Cappy My name is Commodore Caffey. I gotta practice it. By golly, you know, if a fella doesn't keep moving around down here underneath the ocean in a submarine, he can get barnacles all over him. <laughs> By gum, you know, a fella has to keep moving, keep his circulation going, otherwise he'll rust up. 
I'll bet a lot of you boys and girls have never been aboard a submarine before, have you? Well, do you know how far down underneath the top of the ocean we are now aboard this crazy carrot? We are 150 fathoms below. I don't mean that way. I mean straight down. Do you know what? That's the same as one and a half city blocks. Oh, that's a long way down. See, if you've never been aboard a submarine, I'll bet you'd like to look around a little bit, see what I got here. Come on over here. My golly, what's my mother-in-law doing down here? Oh, no, that's a shark. This is a porthole, boys and girls, and one of those killer sharks just, just went skittering by. You know, looking through this porthole, we can see all kinds of wonderful things. There's an electric eel sparkling over there in the corner. You're gonna see a lot more things, too, aboard this here crazy carrot submarine. Look at here. We're concerned at who changed the wallpaper! Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that ain't wallpaper, that's, that's my map. That's a chart over here. Well, well, this is how I plot my course underneath the ocean. If I didn't have this chart here, why, well, I'd get lost underneath the ocean down here. See, I'll bet a lot of you boys... There you see a photograph of what many consider probably the most fanciful children's set ever built done in the Twin Cities. Didn't our technicians and our set builders do a great well, job? They certainly did. The there's, inside of a submarine. There's the magic piano or the merry... What did you call that? The peppy piano. The peppy piano. And, and you crawled Vivian, behind there. Oh, yes, and yeah. Vivian Vulture appeared up where the music... Uh, the role of music ordinarily was. Well, now, are you ready for this? We are going to show you your first audition as a puppeteer on the Commodore Campy Show in this next... Our, our time is just uh, moving absolutely too fast, but, but let's take a look at these two pictures here, because okay. along with many interesting guests appeared on your children's show and on other programs you did, was this gentleman. This gentleman, known to millions of children all yeah. over the world, I suppose, as right. Captain Kangaroo. Yeah, indeed. His real name is Bob Keeshan, mm -hmm. and he not only appeared uh, with me several times on the Clancy Show over the years, uh, but he was here for an Aquatennial celebration, mm -hmm. and uh, we were working that together, children dressed up in costumes right. from many different countries. So again, showing you what a great sensitivity uh, Captain Kangaroo had for upgrading the cultural level of uh, children's programming. And here's another, another one of my favorite mm. pictures uh, uh, with uh, Bob Keeshan. And I had an opportunity to interview him at great length, not on the Clancy <laughs> Show, but many years later on the uh, Sunday morning show, yes. and we had a very serious talk about what's uh, wrong with children's television in the United okay. States, and he okay. cited many things that are wrong with it, and even though we did this interview now maybe five years ago, I don't see much improvement, I'm sorry to say. Mm -hmm. I see some improvement. I think the FCC now is taking a harder st uh, stand and telling uh, TV stations to do a little more for children than they have done in the past. Bob Keeshan in our interview said that the United States makes a big mistake when it allows marketing forces to indicate what our children's programming is going to be. That should not be the criteria. It, it should be to uh, entertain, yes, but also to educate and to uplift, to kind of counteract all of the uh, terrible violence that children are subjected to today uh, through television. And uh, Bob Keeshan went on to say that uh, they do a better job in many foreign countries with mm -hmm. children's TV. Right. In England, that's the case, he said. In France, that's the case. Even in Russia, that's the case. Better programming for children than the U.S. That's a sad commentary on the state of children's television here in our country. Television is one of the greatest tools of communication ever invented by man. And we haven't even touched the surface of what it could do to help children be better. I think the challenge is out there. Well spoken, John. It's an important topic here, by the way, at CTV North Suburbs. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Something we're trying to pursue in a variety of ways. John, I have, as, as you've noticed, I have another kind of microphone in my hand. I I'm going to move out there. I thought you looked a little like <laughs> Donahue there. For Is that a right? Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> All right, call me Phil and send me out to the troops. This is an opportunity for... Um, <clears throat> for uh, people in the audience 
to remember something, to raise a question, John. We have just a few more minutes. Let's do it right now. Have them give their name, too, would you? Uh, my name is Tim Nyberg, and Hi, Tim. you gave me a radio once for drawing. It was either Wilfred the Wiener Wolf <laughs> or the Great Fleet. I can't remember which one. Oh, but, wonderful. But thank you, and um, I really miss local television for kids. Do you think there's any hope of that coming back, or is it just financially not feasible? Uh, you just said the magic word. Uh, the bottom line is it would cost probably uh, four times as much to produce the Clancy show today than it did uh, 15, 20 years ago. I jokingly uh, said in my interview with Noel Holston in the Minneapolis Star, we had a budget of a dollar and a half during the beginning with Commodore Cappy. I actually used to swipe toys from my daughter Nancy's nursery to use as puppets. And some of them became famous, you know, like Dr. Quack. Uh, and uh, we, we could get by in those days with little money, but today it's very expensive. Yes, John, here is another uh, questioner. My name is Avis Watkins, and I'm a grandmother. And I'm also a member of the League of Women Voters of Arden Hills Shoreview. And uh, as a grandmother, I'd be very interested uh, to hear your ideas. What can grandparents do these days to improve TV and um, just generally uh, steer their grandchildren in the right direction? And then I just wanted you to know that um, the Minneapolis League of Women Voters uh, has done a study, and it's called Breaking the Cycle of Violence. And so we're very concerned about this and would be interested in your thoughts in terms of voters. What can voters do? Well, it's uh, very difficult uh, to answer your question, and you raise several important points. Number one, uh, having grandparents help their grandchildren. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, at a certain age, youngsters could benefit greatly by having you read aloud to them, and I hope many, 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 uh, not only grandparents, but uncles and aunts and moms and dads, even though we all live busy lives, will take the time to read out loud to children. As far as uh, trying to upgrade the quality of uh, television programming, uh, I, I would say send letters to the managements uh, of the local TV stations and uh, explain that uh, you are a concerned parent and that you belong to an organization that uh, uh, hopes they will try to upgrade the quality of uh, children's programming. Uh, other than that, uh, I, I guess one way you can do it if there's a program you don't like, a program that has too much violence toward children, you can uh, send a complaint to the sponsor, directly to the sponsor, because when it hits the TV organization in the pocketbook, then they start paying attention. So you could boycott that product or those products if you felt very strongly that this particular children's TV show was just wrong and not, not doing a good job. I'm sorry I can't give you any magical formulas for improving children's television. John, we have uh, Mark Hughes over here and he has, uh, what, a question or a comment? A couple, couple questions if I can. Okay. Firstly, how, how would you change a show like Clancy to re relate to today's society in the mid-90s as opposed to the mid-60s when Clancy was really up and running? That's an excellent question. Uh, I think all of you, as you were kind enough to sit through the tapes we showed you, uh, might have been surprised at how simple our format was. Uh, these were simple programs that we did as uh, Clancy and as Axel and as Willie Ketchum and another good friend of mine Carmen the nurse, who was one of the first women in local television to be a, a true star in every sense in children's programming. I'm not sure that a program like that uh, would pick up a, a strong following of youngsters in today's society, uh, where you have children now who have computers in their homes. I, I happen to be computer ignorant, I'm sorry to say, but children, a lot of them now, are very much into computers, and they might expect a lot more technologically from a children's show than we were giving them 15, 20, 25 years ago. I think you'd have to upgrade the show, and you'd have to spend more money is what it amounts to to try to improve the quality. But I still think some of the simple things like reciting Casey at the bat yeah, once a year, right. I, I'd kind of keep that in there. And, uh, and maybe even reading out loud uh, other quality uh, poetry and literature 
uh, would not be a bad thing to do on TV. John, um, one of the things that clearly is missed in, uh, on the uh, Twin Cities television scene is the kind of warm, gracious, kindly uh, host that you were for so many years on the children's programming here in the Twin Cities. Oh, well, thank you. You, um, thank you. you have been honored by many. <laughs> Uh, just in passing, I want to mention the, uh, the fine work you did on the uh, Sunday Morning with John Gallus program for 31 years, for which you received the Wilbur Award. Yes, uh, that was quite an honor and uh, sort of put the frosting on the cake yeah, after 31 years. And Gene, I want to pay tribute to, to your participation in that show. You were one of my uh, most frequent and regular guests, <laughs> not only appearing as genial Gene uh, Jaber, yeah. always a joy to interview, but also bringing in several of your seminarian sure. students. And I got sure. acquainted with some of those uh, bright young people, and very often that was their first exposure to a television camera, That's was true. it not? John, we're getting the, uh, the big oh, circle here. Oh, time to go. Can you believe it? <laughs> so it is time to go. Thank you very much, John, and uh, let's show our appreciation, people of the audience, <laughs> Thank you. to John. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. My pleasure.